Question. Can we get on top of this mountain with my weight of 70 kilo with the S5 model? Hello everybody, this is the review of the carbon fiber scooter over here. Some call it the uh, S5 dual motor electric carbon uh, fiber scooter. Um, others, they call it the S5 Hero dual motor electric carbon fiber scooter. Uh, so it depends where you look at the documentation, but you can actually see that the uh, carbon fiber scooter here is mainly carbon fiber made out on, at the pole. So uh, although it's called a carbon fiber scooter, um, the deck is made of aluminium, um, the carbon fiber cannot be used when the battery is under the deck as the carbon fiber is flexible and the batteries they will get the impact when it bends. So they just uh, had to use a aluminium deck over here. Uh, instead they have used this aviation grade aluminium so it's very well built, it's very solid, it's very uh, strong and it uh, will certainly resist a lot of uh, weight. Only just the pole is made out of uh, carbon fiber. Uh, the maximum speed is about 25 kilometers an hour and the maximum range is between 20 and 30 kilometers. Uh, the load, the maximum load is about 100 kilograms. Uh, I'm sure it can handle up to 120. Uh, the maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour, well I measured the speed and I get a steady 20 kilometers per hour on my GPS and on the display I saw 17 to 18 kilometers per hour. Uh, the height of the unfolded scooter is about 116 centimeters. So it's approximately between five to seven centimeters higher than the S3 model. The length of the deck from the front to the back is about 96 centimeters. Uh, the Scooter is currently only available in black. There's going to be more colors coming available over the time, but they'll probably add maybe white and orange uh, as two supplemental uh, colors for this scooter. The weight is about 11.5 kilograms, uh, about three kilos more than the S3 model. Um, and this has, of course, to do with the supplemental amount of batteries. So there is about 40 batteries 18650 cells under the deck instead of 28 in the S3 model and you also have supplemental weight because of the fact you got two motors. Uh, there's two versions of the scooter. There is the S5 European model and there is a Chinese version. Uh, you can actually see if it's a European or if it's a uh, Chinese version because the, Ameri sorry, the European version does have a latch here. So if you see this latch it's a European version. The folding mechanism is pretty straightforward. Um, it is very easy to handle and open and close it. Takes about three seconds to open and close uh, the uh, scooter. When folded, uh, it can be stored in the boot of a car. It can be stored under the seat of a, uh, in the train, underground, metro, bus, whatever kind of public transport you're gonna use. The, the steering wheel has two levers. Uh, these are progressive levers. On the left side you got the brake level, on the right side you got the uh, acceleration lever. The voltage is rated 36 volt, uh, which is about 50% uh, more than the S3 model, which had 24 volts. Battery power is 10.4 amps. There is a USB port under the dis display here, which is rated 1 amp at 5 volts. Uh, this is, of course, the dual motor uh, setup. Each motor is rated about uh, 250 watts, which is uh, not too bad. So you get about 500 watt in uh, uh, power, uh, minimum power, and you also have peak power. So each motor can go up to 500 watts, so you get about 1000 watt under the deck. Uh, these are brushless hub motors. Uh, this means that the motor in the wheel is in the wheel actually, and the hub motor uh, needs practically zero maintenance as there is no transmission chains or belts uh, to maintain. Uh, the power of the motor is applied immediately to the wheel. 
Hub motors tend to be less power efficient, but it seems in this model they have taken these brushless hub motors to a, a step higher and they seem to have much more power. Uh, the maximum climbing angle for this scooter is rated at 25% or 25 degrees. It is a very large and a bright front light here uh, and there is also a tail light here that uh, flashes when the scooter is uh, turned on uh, or the light is turned on and it goes solid while braking. Uh, it also has a loud buzzer uh, and a horn or a horn and uh, the same buzzer actually is also used to, the, to alert if the battery is going uh, flat. The dashboard display is pretty simple. There's no fancy features like odometer, timer, or resettable trip meter. The bottom of the battery tech cover is covered with a metal protection shell. Uh, the ground clearance, uh, if we're talking about the deck here, is not that high like you would get with the S3 model. And the protection shell might be useful in case you go down a curb or bottom out on a curbstone, for example. The front and rear brushless hub motors have a very solid plastic mud guard. Uh, I don't think they are easy to break. They really like very sturdy, very, very well built. There's two brakes, the progressive regenerative electric motor braking system. Uh, what I mean with that is that when braking, the energy generated by applying the brake is flowing back to the battery of the scooter. Uh, so the second brake is just a foot brake and braking is applied just by pushing the rear brake mudguard uh, with your foot. I recommend not to use the um, uh, foot brake too much, especially if you're going downhill a very long slope because it will heat up and it might melt the cable inside uh, the uh, mudguard where you have a cable going to the electricity. Uh, so just be aware of that uh, and uh, I do recommend to use the electronic braking system as much as you can. It's pretty strong the electronic braking system, uh, so bend backwards with your body when you're using the electronic brake, especially if you're going down a pretty steep hill. The electronic braking has a built-in ABS system, so the motor will never come to a full lockup. Uh, when applying the brake. The top of the deck is covered with a nice uh, sandpaper cover to ensure that you have a very good grip and you won't slip off the scooter while using it. Uh, the charger um, of the scooter is over here and it's rated 2 amps at 42 volts and comes with a European plug. Inside the box, uh, you'll find also a instruction manual. And when unboxing, actually, the only thing you will have to do is to screw on the handlebars and you're ready to go. The scooter will be charged up to an 80% level upon arrival to your, at your doorstep when you buy it from us, for example. And the trip meter might have some mileage. And that's because they tested out the scooter and uh, might uh, have gone through uh, some factory tests and even a charging cycle. On the side uh, of the scooter, you have these sticker reflectors over here and over here. Uh, so another thing, there is no app support or Bluetooth support, although the display seems to have a Bluetooth logo that flashes when the display is turned on. So there might be some uh, new versions coming out in the future. Maybe they will add this Bluetooth support in the future models. Enough about the specs, so let me show you how to use the scooter. The scooter is turned on and off with the front light uh, button. You find right on top of the headlight of the scooter. Uh, it's right here. So to turn on the scooter, you just have to push the button for about two seconds and it will turn on the scooter. Another two seconds will turn it off. Short push, the same button will turn on the lights of the scooter. And when the scooter has been turned on, only of course, um, so a short push will turn off the front and rear light again. Dashboard, the information is simplified. Uh, there, so it's a little bit disappointing in my opinion uh, because it's so simple. 
I was hoping for more information on the dashboard, but they have chosen a black and a white uh, display on this model uh, compared to the uh, colored uh, S3 model dashboard display, um, which had some issues when driving in sunlight. Uh, you couldn't read the dashboard. Uh, with uh, this model, the S5 model, this issue of barely visible in sunny days dashboard light is resolved, I think. Well, I haven't been able to drive the scooter all yet in sunny conditions. Uh, the display or the dashboard display basically displays five things. Uh, it displays the speed in kilometers per hour, uh, trip, which is actually a very weird autometer, the battery status, current gear, and finally it will indicate if one or dual motor is selected. There is an animation when driving the scooter uh, at the top of the display, which has no added value to the uh, information you get, but you know it looks or it makes it look a little bit more fancy. Just note that the uh, speed is displayed only in kilometers per hour, and uh, there is no option to change it to miles per hour if you're living in a country different than the uh, metric system. So sorry about that. Uh, the trip meter is a little odd, so you, you can not reset the trip meter to zero, it will cycle from zero, zero to 99, and uh, you'll have to keep your current trip value prior to making a trip to calculate the remaining um, amount of kilometers that is left over on this charge, so just try to memorize the uh, trip um, value before you actually go for a drive. The battery indicator is a five bar dotted line indicator. Uh, each bar represents about 20% of charge. Uh, while driving the scooter, the battery information might fluctuate a lot. So you get a little bit of a misinformation sometimes uh, because while going up a very steep hill, uh, you might only get up to one bar. And when you arrive at the top of the hill, the battery indicator might just indicate again uh, four or five bars, but I think it has to do with the amount of current that is drawn by using the dual motor system. When reaching critical battery level, the horn will beep with a single of uh, two second interval beeps. Um, it's good to have a signal, but I can imagine going for a long drive and you're driving on a low battery, the beeps might get uh, a little bit annoying uh, after a while. So changing the gears is done by a short push on the gear button. So this is the gear button over here. Uh, it will cycle between uh, the first, second and third gear. Uh, changing the gear will give you instant acceleration. On the S3 model, if you had, uh, or if you change the gear, you had to stop applying uh, the acceleration lever and then uh, change the gear and then give lever power again and then you will be in the second gear. On the S5 model instead, this is done instantly. So there is no need that you need to release the acceleration lever uh, to apply the new settings or the new gear um, that you're uh, changing to. A long press on the um, gear button will change the uh, number of wheels that will be um, used. So if you long press, you will switch between a single motor or the dual motor. When driving on a single motor, you only use the front wheel motor and uh, the back wheel motor is only used when you're using dual drive. So you cannot switch, for example, to only the back wheel. Uh, so it's always the front wheel that is, is the, the wheel that will be used when you're using a single motor. Um, so this five, S5 model doesn't have any uh, hidden menu like in the S3 model and therefore there's a couple of things you cannot do with this model. So you cannot turn on cruise control and uh, I'm a little bit of a fan of the S3 uh, model cruise control system but you know it's a little bit tricky because this is a very powerful scooter so you're probably not gonna use this cruise control uh, that often because you really accelerate very quickly. So you're more gonna use this uh, handle, this uh, acceleration lever all the time. And also due to the lack that there is no hidden menu, there is nothing you can control regarding the push to start. So once you start to apply power to the uh, 
acceleration leveler, well, it's turned on, uh, then you will actually start to have uh, the wheel spinning. Uh, so um, you don't have to push to start uh, or kick to start the scooter. Talking about the accelerator, it's a very, very easy to apply the power and it's a very progressive accelerator uh, system. So you have not uh, something that happens with other scooters where you either have full power or no power. This is really a, a progressive accelerator and it's really, really smooth. Um, regarding the charging of uh, the batteries, it takes pretty long. So basically it's the same between the S3 and the S5 model. You are looking at a time frame of about five hours. So one more thing, if you are using the S3 model, just be very careful that you're not going to use this uh, power supply of the S5 model uh, on the S3 model because you're going to fry up the S3 model for sure because the voltage is different. Um, but you know, the fact that it sl slowly charges, it takes four or five, five, four hours, uh, you get a better life expectancy from the batteries. And talking about the batteries, the batteries are located under the deck. The S3 model had all its batteries in the front pole. Um, this is because there was enough space for them. Uh, but uh, this one does have the batteries under the deck. Also, because of the fact that the, the batteries are moved from here uh, to the deck, you actually have a better balance with this scooter. So the S3 model does have a lot of weight in the front, in the pole itself. So each time when you actually brake, you feel like you, you know, you're going to fall over. Uh, but this one does have more weight under the deck between the wheels. And um, because of that, these 40 batteries, because there's 20 eight batteries in the uh, S3 model is 40 batteries over here. Uh, you know, the, the, the weight is better uh, distributed. Another flaw uh, with the previous carbon for scooter is that the batteries in the front pole are suffering from major shocks during the drive. And uh, because of the fact that it gets a lot of shocks, it contributed to quite a lot of issues with the S3 model. The European model uh, is using the R ID bat system. Um, so the RID bat is actually the same supplier as the BID electric cars. And if you don't know what is BID, just go and look on the internet. It's actually the counter version of the Tesla cars in the United States. Uh, the Chinese version might have less quality batteries, so be aware of that. And you'll probably notice difference in range, power, uh, when you're using or buying the Chinese model. Uh, the battery uh, is rated about five to 800, even 1,000 recharging cycles. Now let's say we get about 500 recharging cycles with a 30 kilometer range. You're looking at a maximum distance before the batteries are, uh, have to be replaced at about 15,000 kilometers. So you have a, a long range before these batteries are gonna die. Uh, just to give you an idea, when you charge these batteries, it, it costs you about three euro cent for a full charge of uh, 30 kilometers of distance on three uh, cents. So it means that you are looking at a um, electricity bill of 10 euro cent per 100 kilometer. The uh, connector is over here. So this is where you actually have to charge the batteries. I don't like that over here. I would have preferred it upstairs because there might be some dirt and dust water that can get into the uh, plug here when you don't put the cap, the plastic cap on here. Uh, so that's a little bit, you know, uh, a disappointment, but I saw some other scooters where they have it on the side, etc. So I think it's okay. The S3 model is rated IP55. The S5 model is rated IP54. But it does not have any consequences on how you can use the S5 model. You can still drive on wet roads, but it is highly discouraged to use the scooter in, in rain. Avoid any time to drive through water flakes as it will definitely kill the brushless hub motors. Uh, the front wheel uh, during the use in wet uh, weather conditions will actually splash water and also the rear motor might get wet and that's why the IP rating is rated lower than the uh, S3 model. 
As the front and the back wheel are full non-inflatable tires, uh, there is no chance of getting stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere because you get a flat tire. Uh, there is a common complaint for scooters like the Xiaomi scooters. Uh, these users, they seem to complain a lot about the vulnerability of uh, flat tires and the, and the ability of finding replacement tires and also the cost involved with it. And uh, to make things even worse, uh, there is uh, a long transit time if you want to get these tires uh, and you need to be able to replace uh, them and it immobilizes uh, the use of your scooter for maybe even a couple of weeks. So that's something that's not the case with the S5 model. The front suspension is very, very comfortable. The rear motor does not have any suspension at all. Compared to the S3 model, the S5 model is very, very comfortable to drive uh, on even paved roads. So the suspension system in the front is working three times better than the uh, limited efficiency that you get on the suspension from the S3 model. The fact that the rear wheel does not have any suspension, it is not a problem uh, because it still feels very, very smooth uh, when you're having this driving experience with the S5 model. The S5 model comes also with a little kickstand, it's right here. You don't have to screw it on there like uh, you have to do with the S3 model. Uh, the handlebars on the steering wheel are made of materials, the same materials here uh, as the S3 model. So it, it feels very comfortable. And you can see that screwing on the handlebars, uh, you know, the design is very well done because uh, you can see that the handlebar uh, bolts, they actually line up completely. So that's, that's a very, very great job that they've done on the design. So they've really put a lot of effort. Also the build quality, the welding, the paint finish, the plastic materials, the quality of the deck uh, and the front carbon pole, uh, also the mud guards, they're all very, very well done. Uh, there's just a little design flaw uh, through the, uh, on the folding mechanism. The Extreme model locks the front pole when uh, folded. Uh, this is not the case with the S5 model, so the steer wheel is floatable. Uh, when it's folded to 75 degrees left and right. So uh, be aware of that. And uh, what I also noticed with the Estremal is that the lock mechanism uh, makes the scooter roll over. So you get positive things when it's locked and you get negative things when it's locked. Uh, because when the pole is free to swivel, the uh, scooter will actually not roll over in the boot of a car, for example. Uh, as the front wheel does have a feeding cable coming from the battery under the deck, uh, as I explained already, the uh, front wheel is limited to a 75 degree angle left and right. Uh, so the S3 model did, did, you know, can swivel around completely, so it is potentially dangerous when you actually can turn the front wheel 90 degrees because you can get to a, a full stop and you, know, you can fall over just like that when you hit a pothole. Uh, so the S3 model regarding the dashboard display, it will turn off uh, after about three minutes of inactivity. On the S5 model, it's about 30 minutes. Uh, it makes more sense to have a longer inactivity timeout, but uh, you know I think 10 minutes is a little bit of a soft spot. So that should have not used 30 minutes, but 10 minutes in my opinion. I will do a separate video on the range of the scooter, uh, so I hope to be able to do this range test next week when the weather allows so, because they expect some very bad weather next week. And I would like to make two range tests, one with a single motor turned on and one with a dual motor turned on. Uh, I think using the dual motor will have a huge impact on the range of the scooter. Uh, the power of the scooter is really amazing. Uh, with 36 volts, 2 times 500 watt, with a 2 times 500 watt, 200 times 250 watts, but 2 times 500 watt peak, you can climb basically any hill without <laughs> any problem. Uh, if your weight is uh, about 80 kilo to 110 kilo, don't go for the one wheel scooter. Uh, choose this model here, choose the S5 model because uh, you will be disappointed in a single motor. Also, if you're living in a hilly area, again, don't use the single motor, but choose this S5 model instead, uh, as you will be disappointed when you use these single motor uh, scooters that are on the market. Again, uh, if you have a similar weight like me, uh, 
uh, and you would like to drive a little bit more sportive, I can certainly also recommend this S5 model. And I found that the S3 model was really limit limit for my weight. So, um, I, I, I love the power of the scooter. Uh, the S5 model is really reshaping the landscape of electric scooters. Uh, and uh, I can see more and more people abandon their weak 250 to 500 watt scooter and switch over to the F S5 model uh, to get this extra power. And it's, it's worth to spend this extra money. You get uh, a lot for your value, but be careful to find and buy only the European model. Uh, the S5 dual motor model is indeed a real upgrade to a single motor electric scooter. Uh, so I expect many people selling their single motor and go for the dual motor instead. Uh, those who have driven with the S5 model, they won't go back to the single motor. I've got my S3 model, it's there, but I even don't use it anymore. Uh, I, I feel it's just way too weak for me now, and the suspension of the S5 model really is a bonus. There is a big difference between both scooters. So here are the pros and cons. Um, the pros, um, you get a very, very powerful scooter. Uh, once you've used this dual motor drive, you won't switch back, uh, you won't go back to a single motor drive. Um, that's for sure. Um, also, uh, one pro is the limitation of the turning angle of the steer wheel. So there's also a horn. Uh, it is very, very solidly built. Um, it does not compare to the S3 model. Uh, the comfort of the suspension is also absolutely fabulous and you get also this scooter for a pretty interesting price tag. So here are the cons. Uh, the low voltage alarm might be get, an, get annoying when you are using the uh, uh, scooter. Uh, the 3 kilo extra, well, it becomes a little bit heavy to carry, but the supplemental weight adds more stability to the driving experience. The limited dashboard information, uh, no really odometer, and the lack of, uh, being, of being able to reset uh, the trip meter is also a little bit con in my humble opinion. So uh, that's it. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, let me know. I will also put online a separate video on how you can measure the inclination of a uh, mountain. Uh, with your smartphone so you have a better understanding visually. You can test at home uh, how you can see what is the angle because I see videos like guys going up a road and they are claiming that they're going up a road of 25 degrees. Uh, it's not 25 degrees when I see these slopes. It's maybe like 8 or 10 or 12 degrees maximum uh, or 12 percent maximum. It's absolutely so keep an eye on that video. I will post it later uh, this week or, or next week uh, so you can have a better impression about how the uh, scooter um, can handle these uh, steep mountains and how these steep mountains look like. Uh, another thing I would like to discuss with you is I still have a couple of them in stock um, so be aware that if you want to buy them be very fast um, maybe you might see this message and it might be sold out. I will get the next batch by March next year. So I'm uh, going on a trip to China. I will go and visit the factory and I will actually have some discussions with these guys. And it's only next year in March when I return uh, from Southeast Asia that I will start to continue to sell, to sell these scooters. Uh, if you want to be on the waiting list, send me an email. Um, my email address is very simple. It's kurt, K-U-R-T, at skynet.be. So that's my email address. Skynet is S-K-Y-N-E-T, like the uh, Terminator movie, dot B-E for Belgium. So kurt, K-U-R-T, at skynet.be. Thanks for watching this review. Uh, please give them a thumbs up. And let us now see the video if I can climb that mountain of 17 degrees and... Boy, when I stand right in front of the mountain, it looks like a wall. So, let's see. I'll turn on the two motors because I got a steep mountain ahead. 17 degrees, 17 degrees. So, without further ado, let's go. Okay, it's gonna be difficult with one hand. This is the mountain, this is how it looks like. 
So I'm gonna go up and see if I can reach the top. Look at that. And let me take the angle how it looks like. So that's the angle. So that's probably drawing a lot of current now. I'm at uh, 15 kilometers per hour and I'm approximately now already in the uh, middle of the mountain. I still go at uh, 13 kilometers per hour, 12 kilometers per hour. This is actually the steepest part. This is the steepest part of the uh, little mountain here. No, no. Oh, okay. Now you you won't get that with uh, the extreme level for sure. I can even not go on a mountain that has a incline of uh, ten degrees, you know. But this one, uh, you're not gonna do that even with Xiaomi or Etoll or all these other brand names. So I'm almost on top. See, I'm also almost on the top here. Let me uh, let me go to the sign where it says um, how steep this mountain is. So we are now on the top. I get about 14 kilometers per hour now again. I'm gaining speed again. I was driving before. I drove this mountain now already maybe five times to get the best footage for you guys because I'm impressed. And next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to go on top of this mountain again just with a single motor. So. Here we are at the sign here. Look at that. So, so there you go. Let me step off the scooter. So there you go. So this is gonna be the uh, one, two, three, four. I think the sixth or seventh climb. Lost a little bit of energy because you know I'm <laughs> really sucking a lot of power. As you can see, I turned off the dual motor. So I'm gonna try to climb the mountain again just with a single motor. Let's see if that's gonna work. Now, I don't know. I'm really wondering if it's gonna work. So, let me take, take the camera in a decent way. So, good, let's go. My maximum speed will definitely go down, so I'll probably lose speed very quickly. And uh, because you get about 50% of more power, just because of the number of batteries there is like uh, it's not 24 volt it's 28 volts so you get a little bit more performance about 50 percent more performance just by using the uh, uh, more battery power bigger power pack so I'm down to 10 to 10 kilometers per hour here now so I'm not sure if he's gonna make it so that dual motor is I think really necessary to climb up mountains that have this kind of a uh, angle. So I'm at six kilometers per hour and yeah, I think I'm not gonna make it. So it is now nah, four kilometers per hour. So, okay, that's uh, why you should get this uh, two motor engine, uh, two motor uh, version of the scooters. So then you, uh, you can go on top. Let me turn on the dual motor see it while I'm in the middle of the mountain if I can still start okay I turned on the dual motor now let me wait until the car is passed by and I'm gonna give it a little kick yep we're gone there you go I'm in the middle of the mountain 17 degrees look at the speed 12 12 13 kilometers per hour so this is dual motor so when you're uh, where it doesn't go on the single motor, you can go there on a dual motor without a problem. So, no problem. Wow. So, very, very performant. This is a beast. This is a, absolutely a beast. So, if your weight is about, about 70 kilograms, you'll get on top of this mountain of 17 degrees without a problem. I think maybe it will even carry someone who is like 80 kilograms, but if you're talking about, let's say 90 kilograms, I think it's gonna be also a little bit 
difficult for this scooter but yeah if you're living in a hilly area uh, if you are a little bit uh, more of a body mouse, body mouse sorry if I can call it that way I want to be polite uh, yeah this is it this is the scooter you should buy so let me just go back again to the uh, sign the uh, street sign so it explains you what is the uh, angle of this uh, hill here so wonderful um, very happy get a very high performance of course it's gonna draw a lot of uh, more juice so I'm gonna drain the batteries uh, much much faster by you know going up and down this hill uh, I probably can do it maybe 15 times and I'll probably be out of battery okay that's it thank you guys for watching and uh, see you soon again